I'm Dr. Michael A. Brown, Senior Evangelist for the Westview Church of Christ in Huntsville, Alabama. I want to talk to you about a very important subject. In fact, it's a subject I'm sure you may not have given the consideration that it really needs to have. Have you ever asked yourself the question, why am I here? Have you ever wondered what was God's purpose for you in the first place? The Bible has a specific answer for that question. And it's the same answer for every man, woman, boy, or girl. God has a purpose. But to think about the purpose of God forces us to first think about our being created in the first place. The Bible in the book of Genesis talks about God's creation of humanity. He created Adam and then he created Eve. And the Bible lets us know that God had union, fellowship with Adam and Eve. But let's take it back a little bit further and ask ourselves another important question. And that question has to do with why did God make us? What was going on in the mind of God before making humanity? Well, we have to first remember that God is triune. There's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We refer to this as the Trinity. There's relationship within the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit interrelate. Each is a distinct person, and yet they are one. So we don't speak of this in a polytheistic sense of, a sense of many gods. There's one God, and yet the one God exists in three persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is shalom, peace, within the Godhead. Even though each is a distinct personality, there is a oneness, a harmony, a fellowship, a union. There is relational shalom, or if we want to use another term, relational peace. Now it is out of that peace, out of that relational shalom, that God created humanity. That's a wonderful thought. God made mankind with the thought of mankind sharing in the same type of relational peace that exists in the Godhead. So God created Adam, and God created Eve, and God blessed them and told them to be fruitful and multiply to replenish the earth. Of course, we know there's a dark side to that story. Satan tempted Eve. And when Satan tempted Eve, she accepted the temptation. She influenced her husband, and he also followed Satan's lead. Sadly, they broke God's command, and as a result of that, they lost their union with the Father. The peace that is indicated in the book of Genesis that existed between Adam and God no longer existed. We read about this in the second chapter and in the third chapter of the book of Genesis. God comes looking for Adam and Adam is hiding. You remember where Adam said, I was naked and I hid myself. Well, one might reason very clearly from the scriptures that Adam was naked when God made him. So this was really the sin, the guilt of the sin that was in Adam's heart that caused him to hide from God. Well, sadly, our human foreparents are put out of the garden. And their relationship with God is no longer what it was designed to be. But not only is that a problem, the peace that Adam and Eve enjoyed among themselves is no longer there. If you remember the book of Genesis, reading again the second and the third chapter, you'll find where Adam blames Eve for his sin. You'll find where Eve blames the serpent for her sin. There is a destruction in the relational shalom that existed between God and man and between humankind, Adam and Eve. Well, once they're put out of the garden, we find humanity's path continues to spiral downward. Adam and Eve have two children. There's Cain and there's Abel. And you will find in the book of Genesis that Cain kills his brother. And then continued acts of sin happen within these early generations of humanity. 
So much so that by the time you get to Genesis chapter number 6, the Bible says it repented God that he had made man. Because the thought of humanity was continuously evil. But God still had his plan for mankind. And this is the plan that involves something called the kingdom of God. You see, the kingdom of God is God's means of restoring to humanity and between humanity and himself the relationship that was designed from the very beginning. When we think about the kingdom of God, we have to think not of territory or place, but we must think of rule or reign. In a sense, God's kingdom is universal. There's nothing that is, was, or shall be that is outside of the reign of God. But then there's a special sense in which to understand the kingdom of God, and that is the people who receive the special favor of God. Now, what does all of this have to do with our original question? Why am I here? Well, we are here so that we can have special union with God, special favor with God, special fellowship with God, relational shalom with our divine creator. Well, where do we experience this? In God's kingdom. And I'm not speaking right now of the universal kingdom. I'm speaking of the kingdom within the universal kingdom. The place where God favors his own people. And so when we talk about the kingdom of God, and this is the first of a series of lessons on the subject, we're talking about the kingdom within the overall universal kingdom, where God's people receive special favor. Special blessing. Now let's clarify something. When we talk about special favor and special blessing, we're not talking about what is commonly thought of when those terms are mentioned. We're not talking about the greatest material things. We're not talking about riches. We're not talking about those things that are focused in the realm of time. While these things are important, Matthew chapter 6, Jesus teaches us that our Father in Heaven knows that we have need of these things. But there's something deeper we need to be concerned about. Seeking the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And so when we speak of the favor of God, don't think of a new car or a new house or nice clothes. God may bless us with things of this nature, but these things do not have any eternal weight to them. In fact, Jesus would tell us on several occasions about the value of placing our treasure in heaven and not placing our treasure here on earth. The kingdom of God then, this is what your destiny and my destiny is really all about by God's desire. He wants us to be within his special realm of favor, of love, of acceptance, of redemption, of salvation, all of these wonderful things that we can receive in our union with God. And so God created us to be in union with Him. Man fell into sin. And as a result of that, God initiated, inaugurated a plan, a scheme of redemption by which He would reach into humanity and receive people into His kingdom within a kingdom. And these people would receive his special favor. This is a wonderful concept and one that I hope that you'll give serious consideration to.